Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim, where I'm going to try out the new freeware A10 by Aviator671 that is available on flightsim.to. I'll put the link in the video description. It is a conversion of the FSX Iris A10A, and so we'll see how that's worked out in FS2020. And it does have some caveats. It says that the cockpit gauges are partially functional, but nothing in the cockpit is clickable, so that's uh, downside. And there are exterior weapon loadouts. Well, there's one exterior weapon loadout right now. And it says in the description that uh, once Asobo fixes a multiplayer lights issue, then the weapons will be fully customizable. Uh, I guess we put one or something like that. I guess that's what it's trying to tell me. But which, which loadout is actually the one that we get to use? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just going to... We'll just do that. I don't know what it'll look like, but we'll just do that for now. Uh, one interesting thing is that the CG is out of limit, um, regardless of how much fuel I put in. So some things may need to be refined, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. There are a bunch of liveries. The Iris original came with a whole bunch of liveries, and those, I guess, have been adapted. And I've picked the one for Nellis, so we'll take off from Nellis and see how it flies. Or I thought I'd pick the one from Nellis. Uh, well, they didn't change this icon. Okay. All right then, let's get to it. It says that two models are included, one for the normal A-10 with weapons and one for a demo team aircraft with no weapons and fewer pylons. Uh, it says that the canopy can be opened on the ground with taxi lights and the boarding ladder appears, when the, uh, appears down when the canopy is open and the engines are shut down. Now, some people in the comments on this plane said that the engines quit after around a minute of flight time, so we'll check that out. But it's probably some conflict that they had, and maybe I have, or maybe I don't have. So, this is what the cockpit looks like, and... Oh, the engine dials work, so that's important. The sound is nice. And again, nothing is clickable, so we're not expecting that. It looks pretty good on the outside. Um, I guess we're just on this loadout because I don't see four Mark 82s. So yeah, loading it out with a custom loadout doesn't actually work at all. I guess I guess this situation right now until a Sobo fixes whatever it introduced in in update 14 that's preventing that. I don't understand how the loadout thing works, so yeah. But the exterior model looks great. I mean, uh, it is an FSX conversion, but there are FSX planes and then there are F FSX planes, right? So I think it's still serviceable in this version of Flight Sim. Uh, let me take a look at the flaps and all. That's nifty. The air brakes are sort of interesting. The split aileron air brakes of the A10. That's working fine. Okay, so, and um, yeah, that sound is interesting. So, yeah, let's go for it. Okay. I do have the Flaming Cliss version of the A10A in DCS world, which is sort of like this because it is also doesn't have a clickable cockpit. So, land in here. Takes off very smoothly. It feels about like what I would expect. It's actually got... Oh, oh okay. Well, that overstressed the aircraft. Um, so that's interesting. I did uh, pull up a little bit, so I was pulling some G's there. But I don't know, recall off the top of my head what the G limit for the A10 is. Okay, that's the G limit dial. It only goes up to three G's if I'm reading that right, so yeah, okay. Maybe I'll need to be a little bit more cautious with it. Otherwise it feels very smooth. Uh, 
An attack plane should feel sort of super stable. Yeah, I think it's a very stable plane to fly right now. I think people would find this relaxing and enjoyable. Uh, if you want the more exciting version, of course, the non-Flaming Cliffs A-10 in DCS world might be the thing. Oop. It is very easy to overstress it, though. But maybe I've been flying the fighter planes too much. Okay, but we have to test whether the engines quit. Okay, so yeah, let's just fly it for a distance and see how the engines do and make sure there's no nothing here. I've got quite a few mods. I mean, Flight Sim takes a fairly long time to load for me. But a lot of my mods are scenery mods or some of the more popular plane mods. I'll keep it at full thrust just in case it was like an engine overstress issue. You'll see. I don't think that would be likely. But technically the fan is in yellow territory. And the uh, RPM percent is beyond yellow territory. But uh, actually the temp is beyond green too. I don't know how seriously I should take that. Maybe we should be backed off to here. But let me push it all the way and see if it overstresses it, if that's an issue or not. Fuel is ticking down pretty fast. Did I get the full amount? Yeah, I got the full amount, so... Interesting, I guess we have about an hour and a half worth at uh, full thrust. I don't know if the external tanks feed any fuel into it. I don't see where that is in the weight. I don't see that they're giving us any fuel at all. Oh, well, straight out of Nellis, following this one highway here. This is I-15, so we should meet some airports along the way. Certainly the engines have not quit on me after a minute. We're at 15,000 feet right now, going a little bit past 250 knots. Fuel's still ticking down about a pound per second. But of course, uh, considering... I mean, there's two ways con to consider this. Uh, port of the FSX plane, in which case it's good, I mean, except, you know, we can't click on things. Uh, and then, as a freeware plane, it's very good. And I don't know, honestly, what it takes to make a cockpit clickable. Maybe someday that'll happen. Aviator 671 has released another plane, which is the F-86 Sabre, and I've flown that, and that was good to fly too. I did make a video of it separately. As we continue to cruise right along here. Nice day out in Nevada. We're at 20,000 feet, ground speed 370 knots. Day 10 is not going to be flying fast. If I'm looking at the map correctly, what we see there is the Virgin River. And we're approaching Mesquite. So yeah, I'm full thrust and I haven't had any technical problems with it so far. Considering it's not particularly flying fast, I wouldn't necessarily want to throttle down. We're at 300 knots. It says that the limit is 350 down up here. And the ground speed is now 446, so it's capable of basically airliner speeds. Well, I say that, but not quite not quite airliner speeds. If it could get to that max, it would be able to, but I don't think it can. Well, it shouldn't be able to go that fast anyway, so. That's the town of Mesquite around the border between Nevada and Utah. And I'll look to land at St. George. Seems like a good place to land. I think I've 
check that it works. The plane certainly works. It feels fine. Just be careful about how you turn it, otherwise it'll overstress the darn thing. But we should do a sort of dive with the air brakes out kind of thing and see how that works. So we're pretty close to St. George and we have to descend quite a lot. Let's do that. I've got the air brakes out. There they are. And I'm going straight down. Well, it says dive there. I'm going at the marker that says dive. How about that? And it's actually reducing my speed, so the air brakes certainly work. I mean, I don't think there's any reason to keep the throttle high while you do this. So yes. Air brakes successful, and let's bring them in now. There's still Interstate 15. And I'll try to be gentle with it after this flight. I don't want to overstress it now. Guess, is there a tunnel or a pass here? Uh, it's a very tight pass. Not particularly well rendered by Flight Sim. Okay, we are now approaching St. George. We will see how this lands. Should be right alongside the airport. Where the heck is it? Oh, I feel like I'm blind. I can't quite spot it. Uh, maybe that? Hmm. Not the most distinct airport ever. Alright. Okay, turning carefully. Well, if the A-10 is supposed to be very difficult to fly, fly, then... Then this isn't very difficult to fly. However, I think the main difficulty with the A-10 is managing all the weapon systems and being knowledgeable about all that while also flying the plane because it doesn't have a dedicated, like, radar person or weapons person. Okay, there's the airport. So... It's just one pilot having to do everything is one of the complications of it. Hey, landing gear. Looks like we're not slow enough. Okay. Okay, fairly calm day here. Just seeing where it wants to touch down at. There we go. And yeah, no no drama there. So yeah, the A10. Brought to us by Aviator671. And the link will be in the video description. For one of my circumnavigations where I fly different planes, it'll be handy because, well, it's faster than a Cessna. <laughs> We've got a lot of planes that have the same Rotax 912 engine, let's face it. So, anything that uh, can get around a little bit faster lets us cover more territory. And for sure this will be okay for um, sightseeing because it can get go low to the ground and go slow, right? So it does have that benefit in Flight Sim that we do want planes that can go slow and get close to sites 
And this could do that. It's, it feels very stable to fly. I'm not really following the line very well. Yeah, it feels very stable to fly. And of course it can slow down. Its wing allows it to fly fairly slowly compared to other planes that, you know, f are capable of going 400 knots ground speed. So anyway, as I taxi along, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.